Hey guys, uh, I've got a, another pedal board video for you. I uh, posted a picture on the uh, Facebook group uh, Helix uh, Family Group of Users, and I've had a lot of questions about this uh, HX Stomp uh, hybrid board. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos before, you know I have a larger board that I use for church that's uh, based around the HX Stomp. I also play in a punk band outside of church, and I don't need most of those effects. I wanted something a little more compact that I didn't have to worry about hauling that larger case around. So I put this together for that reason and it also works in a church context, especially um, if I'm, you know, if I would have to put out some work further away or whatnot. So um, I'll start with uh, my settings on the HX Stomp. So my amp is a matchless or the matchstick. I have the jump channel version of it and I'm running it pretty hot. Sounds like this all the way up. Um, the reason I have it that way is because I'm not running so many overdrive pedals. So if I need to clean up the tone, I can just roll back on the volume. One of the main purposes of this board was to basically have the ant just punished or pushed at its limits when I smash other drives into the front of it. So uh, just really get that high gain saturated tone, especially for punk or like this board came into uh, country if I just don't use any drive channels. So that then goes into my wet effects that I run between the amp and the cabinet or my IR. My IR is the Live Ready Sound uh, IRs. I really love these. I know no one's not, or I don't hear about them as much anymore. I don't feel like anyone's using them as much, but uh, these are really great tight. I mean, they are easy to kind of tone or shape the tone with um, the amp EQ and whatnot. So I really love this. The wet effects I have is I have a core note delay. It's the transistor tape delay. It sounds like this. That goes into my effects loop, which is my TC Electronics Nova delay. And then I normally have that doing a uh, eighth note del or dotted eighth note delay. So if I put them both together, it just has a bigger reverb that kind of gets away from, or bigger delay that gets away from it. That goes into my next wet effects, which is my reverb. It's the dynamic plate reverb. I really like the sound of this. Uh, I, I like reverb in any um, setting. In my this is without it. This is with it on. And I tend to leave that on all the time. So after my IR, I just started doing this re or within the last year, especially when Line 6 did the uh, update to where you can have two cabinets and one IR block. Um, I started adding compressor and EQ block at the end, specifically the combination, which is the three band comp. And it really adds a third dimension to the sound. Uh, just really kind of feels more like an amp than it did previously. And I was always happy with how it sounded before doing this, but uh, here's without it. Now let's turn that on. The sound you get from a speaker pushing air against a closed back cabinet, that's what I get out of that sound. It, it feels more natural to me. So finally, at the end of my chain, I have the tile reverb. Um, this just kind of mimics the sound of a amp or a mic amp picking up room reverb from the amp. So this is without it. Turn off the other reverb too. This is with it on just really sounds more of like an amp being picked up in a room, a little more natural to me. So that goes into my board, which starts with the TC Electronics Polytune 3 Mini. I have the buffer output on, and then I have the tuner always on. I always like to see my tuning with the volume up or down. So even while I'm playing, I just want to be able to see where I'm at. Um, that then goes into the Keeley Compressor Mini. This is a really great comp. The only thing I don't like about it is it colors the sound pretty quickly with the compression. Um, so I have it turned down quite a bit lower. 
I'm a big fan of the JHS uh, Whitey Tidy Compressor. It's very transparent, but this still sounds really great, and it does force me to play a little differently than I would with my other board. Um, so this is without the compressor. So the cool thing about that is it just helps uh, bring my higher strings and my lower strings within the same volume so everything kind of sticks out a little bit more. In my opinion, that's how I feel. Uh, next goes into the Bloomery volume pedal. This is a great volume pedal, but it is a chunky boy, and uh, I probably will switch it out to something else just because it feels like the volume doesn't kick on until I'm about 30% up. But it does the job great right now for what I do in this band, and uh, it's more so kind of like an off and on or the pullback on the game. Then that goes into the VSN Octopus. This is a phenomenal pedal for the money. It was only $40 on Amazon. Uh, you can find it under different brands too. It's one of those Chinese made uh, pedals that has a bunch of different brandings behind it. Uh, it sounds pretty close to a Pog, in my honest opinion, or like one of the Pog mini pedals. Uh, here's how it sounds. The other cool thing about this pedal that I, did, I just found out about is uh, if you double tap it, you can have presets. So uh, you don't have to worry about messing something up or uh, knobs being moved. Then that goes into my Analog Man Prince of Tone. The Prince of Tone is my second gain stage drive, so I'll go into the 2B next. The 2B is my first gain stage overdrive. So once again, the purpose behind the setup was to keep my amp sound, but just to really drive it rather than color it with a bunch of um, other overdrive pedals. So without it, It uh, just really, as I like to say, gooses that amp, really makes it hot, pushes it forward. Um, and then I like to run my Prince of Tone into that to really get a compressed, overdriven sound. So this is without the Prince of Tone. sounds great to me it works in uh, punk rock or even in church setting if i want so then that goes into my tc electronics uh nova modulator i really wanted to have a multi-modulating pedal but a lot of the options cost quite a bit of money like the walrus and so forth and i didn't realize they made these until i fought, found it on facebook marketplace and got first deal so uh, normally i like to go between a, a chorus or a flanger right now it's in the tri chorus <laughs> It also has presets in it, so I can do multiple different settings with that, which is great. Then that goes into the front of the HX Stomp. And then the HX Stomp through the effects loop, I have the Nova Delay, which sounds like this. Um, on the HX Stomp itself, I have it set up to have the delay on the HX Stomp turn off fire on. I'll probably change that to be between a quarter note and a dot eighth note, because it typically always has a delay on. And then I've also like to have a big washy reverb. So right now this just, if you look at the uh, page on the stomp, this button controls the decay in the mix. So Like I said, can use it in a church setting or uh, the indie kind of washy spacey feel. And then the last one is a solo boost. So I'll show you what that looks like. When I press the button, it turns the gain up on my guitar amps. And then it also turns up the level on the compressor and just pushes it. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
Just uh, really pushes everything over the top to really get a nice, great, uh, kind of like an 80s style guitar solo sound. So that's the gist of my board. Uh, last thing I didn't show you here is I had this dual switch. This just banks up and down on the HX Stomp presets. So the HX Stomp will have the tempo set already on each preset for whatever song I have it on. And then I will probably switch out to the CC Electronics for a, a newbie uh, modulation pedal that I have coming in, or it's a wet effects pedal. It's got reverb and delay built into it. And then I'll use the HX Stomp to run MIDI commands out from it into the newbie. So um, that's the gist of this board or how I have it set up. It's mostly set up in mono right now, but I have the option to do stereo effects. So probably what I'll do um, if I ever want to use it for church is I'll run stereo if I can run stereo, depending on the church. Um, but most of the time I'll probably have it for mono so that way I don't have to worry about if a venue can have me in stereo or not and just use the sport instead. So thanks for sticking around for this uh, over-explained video. I appreciate it and uh, check out my other videos. If you guys have questions on my big board, I have an older video from like 2020 of it. It's mostly the same, but there are some changes. So I'll see about updating that if you guys are interested in that bigger board. So cool. Peace.